Hi everyone. Um, okay, I just went into the uh, Gila Dwellings uh, Visitor Center. It's a small, uh, small visitor center. Uh, they have a film and they have artifacts and sort of a little museum uh, to explain um, everything there is to about the uh, the cave dwellings and how they originated and the um, the population, the indigenous population, and all. But then uh, when I was asking about uh, campgrounds, there's a number of campgrounds that are free all around here because this is a national forest. But the woman uh, volunteer there told me about uh, we have a wind advisory for today for 45 mile an hour winds, which I can tell already. And um, there's also a winter uh, advisory or warning uh, for tonight. And... Uh, it could be up to an inch of snow here, which is lower and in this canyon, but up on the mountains, uh, that road can get really slick. And um, a lot of places, there's no guardrails or anything like that. So she warned about that. So I'm trying to decide what to do. Um, in some cases, it takes like three hours to get out of here to go to uh, the main, get to a main highway. So I don't know whether I should hunker down here for a couple of days or I should do the trail. It's about a mile and a half trail of the uh, cave dwellings and hightail it out. So these are the questions uh, and issues that um, the uh, people like me, <laughs> these travelers, uh, need to... Uh, figure out. So I don't have the day in and uh, day in and day out everyday stress of work anymore, but I have to figure out travel routes and destinations and all that stuff. So it's a tough life. Um, <laughs> it's actually, I, I so much enjoy it and I'm having uh, so much fun. Um, and I'm glad I'm able to share this with whoever's interested. If nobody's interested, that's fine too. But I know some of my family and friends have indicated that uh, these photos and videos um, are really enjoyable. So I'll keep doing it. I'm going to I'm thinking about doing a live session. Um, I don't know when that will be, but I'll put something out in advance and people can tune in. Uh, right now, YouTube is not looking good for me. It takes a long time for me to upload and. They won't let me live stream, so I may have to do it via Facebook, which, as you know, I'm not a big Facebook fan, but I went back to it. So anyway, um, I'll keep you posted and let you know, and um, you guys have a great day, and uh, the next stop will be the trail to the cave dwellings. Okay, over now. So this is the hike to the uh, Gila dwellings cave dwellings and I think that's a cave up there we have to go up this was the way I came so it looks like those are the, the caves they were actually inhabited only 24 years um, and it was during a drought that they came here because of the lush vegetation and the river and the springs um, but then they left once the drought ended so interesting so this is the first spot where you can actually see the cave dwellings on the trail and that's where we're hiking up to We're almost through the caves. Let's see where we came from. It's really windy. It says a 45 mile an hour wind. And in this canyon, canyon we're sort of protected, but they still go through. The wind gets through pretty fast. Uh, anyway. All right, we're coming upon the dwellings now we got up this far you can see the, the 
the way the water and wind carved this out. I'm actually in a cutout here. It would be a good protective area. Then they said those black marks are from smoke and fires that the people's lit. So this is the first area we're coming to. Uh, looks like they made a small room. And again, the top of the cave is supposed to be covered with carbon from the fires they lit. It's probably another room over there. Amazing. see from the cave and they did a good job and there's the tea window they say and it's symbolic of the Hopi, Hopi um, God and you see that in the Pueblos further north and west in Arizona and so they traded with uh, many southwestern and other tribes and groups and clans, even down in Mexico, they found parrots, parrot feathers here, uh, things like that. And parrots didn't live here natively, but they traded for them. And you can see this little opening. I don't know if it's for a fire. Look out. Take you up these steps into this dwelling. Don't know how much of this is coming out, but we're inside the cave and the dwelling. Remarkable. I feel like crying because it's it's very very moving. Imagine people lived here in the 1200s. The back of the cave must have been warm, and if they lit fires back there, they were nice and secure. And then you have these structures where they built different rooms. Some common. They said it's a, it was a number of families lived in here. It wasn't a lot of people, maybe 50, 60, 70, but that might have been like a common room and uh, maybe for fire. 
may have been storage for grain or prickly pear or one of the other things that they was a staple in their diet. But the ceiling, the ceiling tells how many fires were lit. Had to be a lot. So let's keep walking. See the other rooms. This is a pretty big cave. And here you see a whole separate room. So this may have been for a specific family. And you can see the walls they built. It's probably a fireplace of some sort. Maybe entrances and exits. We'll try to back up a little so you can kind of give a sense of the size of the room. And this is the bigger part of the cave. All right, let's see if we can uh, navigate this these stairs to a whole other section. Supposedly there's a long, long ladder that uh, may not want to do in the wind, but let's see. So, wow, gives you a different perspective up here, different rooms. They certainly built a lot in here and only stayed a certain amount of time, but they did some job. Uh, Mesa Verde is another... Uh, Sorry, my finger's in the way. Mesa Verde is another uh, cliff dwelling. It's much larger than Gila. Uh, but they supposedly traded with them. Walking along this ledge, another room. The ladder. The window. Another room in there. It looks like a small room, maybe for storing, storing things and. If I want to go down that ladder, let's see. Let's continue. There's another ladder here. a latrine in the corner, who knows? I don't know if the Romans built it that way, I think. If I remember reading, they did. But it's a good shot back there. Looks like they may have even dug this out, I don't know. Pretty dark. Maybe they stored food in all there. It's really windy. 
getting windier. Looks like we might be coming to the end. Yep, return via the stairs. So, this is it. Another room over there. Okay, I just came down this ladder. Yes, it's hard to believe, and there was a lot of creaks and cracks, but I did get down successfully. And uh, we're gonna continue down the path. So, here we go. Okay, we're on the way down from the cave, uh, Gila cave dwelling area, and uh, the uh, entry center is down below so we have a long way down but it's not that far i'm glad i did this hike um i'm not sure if it was a mile out and a mile back but um there were steps a lot of steps but it wasn't too bad i'm glad i hiked yesterday it kind of broke me in um a bit so i've decided what to do tonight there's an impending snowstorm coming in um it's going to be an inch down here but much higher at the passes and uh, they do plow it um, during the day they don't plow at night or on the weekends but but what I found is there is a Gila hot springs place and it's seven dollars to take a day soak and it's only ten dollars to camp there um, it's just a camp, camp place to park but you have unlimited use of the pools and I, I think there's three or four pools so anyway, I think that's what I'm going to do, because if you're going to get stuck, you might as well get stuck at a hot, hot spring. So, we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Okay. Um, unbelievable. It was spiritual, I have to say. Um, very, very spiritual. Okay. Jersey Mark out.